Okay, thanks so much for that um, great introduction, Vicki. Um, as Vicki said, I'm Stephanie May. I'm the Director of Geospatial at Stamen Design. We're a professional services company that specializes in mapping and data visualization. We consult with government agencies, NGOs, and all of the sorts of companies, um, all sorts of companies about what to build and how to build it in the mapping space, or we build it for them and hand it over to them to run. We don't do much print cartography, which um, makes me feel a little anomalous at conferences like this sometimes. Um, mainly interactive and or digital application components ranging from giant digital touch screens uh, in museum exhibits and the lobbies of uh, corporate headquarters uh, to web applications for first responders and, rescue man and, and resource managers to base maps in delivery and rideshare apps. My background before Stamen was in big tech and before that in local government. Like many of you, my career has been that of uh, professional polymath, uh, adapting to and mapping the languages of different uh, disciplines in order to make sense of things and communicate. It's for that reason that full, state car full stack cartographer is a term that resonates for me and many of my colleagues at Stamen. In practical terms, what that means is that we don't align with one sophomore system or set of services or GUI. We use them all or none or a text editor or whatever. We seek to understand the fundamental technical components we are working with in order to make our maps. And that's the perspective from which I am speaking to you today. Um, wanted to give a quick shout out about this term, full stack cartographer, to uh, Gretchen Peterson. Uh, she mentioned it in her recent book. Um, great definition there. And another shout out to my colleagues, Alan McConkie and Katie Kowalski, who recently um, did an interview for the Mapscaping podcast where they talked a lot more about this concept of a full stack cartographer. Anyway, in cartographic terms, um, this perspective is valuable because let's say I wanna make a web map of the tornado tracks through Kansas. Conventional wisdom in web mapping says that a web map is comprised of a base map and the stuff you stick on it, and maybe some markers and icons or a pin or something, and you can pan around and zoom in and out, right? That's a web map. First off, I don't need to explain to a room of cartographers why the concept of a base map is asinine. Am I right? To be truly effective, any map should be laser focused and parsimonious around the purpose that it serves. Thus, my map of tornado tracks is less artful if I'm just displaying them on top of a generic reference map called a base map that prominently displays controls that allows users to easily pan and zoom around and search and check the light rail schedule for when I'm gonna get to the airport uh, here in Minneapolis. Yet that's the very definition of a generic web map or web mapping application. Uh, my colleague Damon Burgett put together this uh, snarky but informative decision tree for do I need a map? Um, along these lines, do I need a slippy map? Um, raise of hands if you, you're familiar with that, that, that term, slippy map. Okay, great. Um, slippy map is a nickname that not everyone has heard of for a map that you can zoom in and out of. Um, if you don't need that, your map will be cleaner and more performant if you don't. Um, and, and there's ways to do it. Even if you want to zoom in and out, you may not need tiles. Not everyone knows this, but you can make a slippy map out of a GeoJSON. The renderer doesn't care. Um, Mapbox is a great solution. Um, it's one that a lot of people start with, um, but um, it, it really makes the most sense if you, if, you know, for, for a specific set of use cases. Um, and then there are other use cases where, where you need to go beyond Ma Mapbox. Um, for example, if you need to rely significantly on your data or you need control of that data and you need to be able to set up on your own servers, um, which, is where, um, which, is, which is where we welcome you to our world. This is um, what we often deal with uh, at Stamen. So here I've mentioned Mapbox a couple of times and that's important because Mapbox has really revolutionized this um, web mapping space for us. Um, however, they haven't really moved the, needle, moved the needle on this paradigm, the paradigm of what a web map is. Um, They've made it really easy to follow this path, follow this yellow brick road um, of building a web map, um, you know, starting with data, creating a style sheet with a render and building a, a web mapping application much like the one that I described. Um, 
But as full stack cartographers, um, uh, and we, you know, we understand that they've done this through a lot of genius and hard work, and we're, we're, we're forever in their debt. Um, but we also sometimes need to talk about how we take this further and, and how we fork the yellow brick road. Um, we understand that there's, a, 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 many of you in this room may understand that there's potential for a lot of forks. <laughs> and what, once, that once you've started exploring these side paths, it's pretty easy to get to a level of complexity that requires software engineers and visual designers and data experts to support it. Um, but I, 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 I will submit that it also requires technical cartographers who can communicate with all of these various members um, and help coordinate um, how this path comes together. So this brings me back to the title of my talk. What is vector tile cartography? Well, um, it, it's, a it's, a, it's a phrase that I've coined here to describe um, the reality of the yellow brick road. And um, it's, uh, you know, if you'll, if you'll bear with me, I'll torture this um, Wizard of Oz metaphor a little bit more as I, as I describe um, uh, why, it's a, why it's important to me. Um, vector tile car cartography, in my mind, is cartography d done within the web of services that connect data in the form of vector tiles with a renderer. A, a renderer is, of course, a, a, a type of wizardry. Um, and they output a map. Um, example of, of examples of renderers for vector tile maps that you may have heard of, Mapbox.jl, MapLibre, and Tangram. Of course, we all know uh, there are big companies like Apple and Google that maintain their own renderers. This is quite a daunting undertaking. And for that reason, I think a lot of cartographers, me included at various points, are confused and scared by the renderer. But it's the renderer that brings everything together. It's the renderer that needs us in the end, and the, the renderer that, needs, uh, that takes our input and uses it to make a map. So that, that's fundamental to understanding a lot of the workflows and toolings that we have started developing at Stamen. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about those in the time that I have left, and thank you for sticking around here at the end of this very long Thursday for that. Um, a few examples of tools that we've been develop workflow tools that we've been developing at Stamen in order to um, influence this, uh, these forks in the yellow brick road are Mapature, Chartographer, and Figma set. Um, and while I, as perhaps many of you, have spent a lot of time thinking about vector tile cartography, um, it, my, bear with me as, you know, I, it's, a, it's, it's still, it's still a, bear with me on my metaphors as it's a, um, it, it really fundamentally what I'm trying to say with all of this um, is that we communicate best with the renderer through tools that help us explore and iterate and collaborate rather than by trying to learn a software GUI. As cartographers, uh, if you're working with a client that is forking the yellow brick road, they may have underestimated the challenge of, of, of uh, some of the, the, the cartographic assets that you need to maintain. Um, specifically, those are sprites, the big old PNG, like in the, in the Mapbox or MapLibre ecosystem, the big old PNG that um, contains, packs together all of the um, icons and textures that you're using. Uh, styles, the big old, the ordered or big old JSON, that's an ordered list of, of everything that you're using to style the map. And fonts, which need to be um, hosted and served uh, separately. Um, all the fonts that you're using on the map, um, regardless of whether they're installed on your computer by default. Which brings me to um, uh, that, my, the first of the tools that I wanted to describe to you today. Those of you who are at Practical Cartography Day yesterday may have um, caught my talk with Kelsey Taylor, uh, where uh, she live demoed this tool. Um, there's links to it if you want to play around with it in the NASIS 2022 Great Hall um, Slack channel. Um, but in brief, Figma set allows you to create an asset pipeline on the fly for sprite sheets compatible with Mapbox.gl or MapLibre. You can use it to explore your data if, that you're interested in symbol, symbolizing and to develop your symbology by iterating between Figma and your map and, publi and to publish and maintain one or more sprite sheets on, or versions of sprite sheets that, are using, that, that you are using in a production map or set of maps. Um, please reach out if you'd like to hear any more about this one. 
Another core tool for Stamen cartographers is Mapperture. Um, it's a side-by-side -side viewer that allows you to compare multiple views across multiple locations. We use it to preview style changes simply by setting it up to refresh when the style sheet is changed in a code editor. Or and we also integrate it into GitHub for cartographic code reviews. You can also use it to compare different maps of the same place, preview what your map looks like uh, tilted or on a, a phone or mobile application. My third example of a tool that we've developed for our workflows is Chartographer. Uh, check out the Stamen website uh, for our recent blog post about this one. You'll find a link there for a website, chartographer.stamen.com, that allows you to drop a Mapbox GL or a Map Libre style sheet um, and visualize your map symbology chart-wise, uh, EJ, so that you can see every fill color, every line width, every label style uh, stacked um, next to each other so the inconsistencies pop out at you and you can fix them. Or else if you're one of those perfect cartographers, you can just revel in your own perfection and how you've uh, been so consistent with your symbology. Uh, the output is an S SVG, so you can also import it into Figma or Illustrator if you want to edit and refine it as a form of documentation or as a viewer-facing legend. Um, we have a variety of other tools that are all in service of um, um, collaboration and um, workflow support. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this slide because I still am holding out hope that I'll have time to answer any questions. Um, but we have a lot of other ones. Um, and wait, there's more. Um, remember how I was ranting in the beginning about full stack cartographers and how um, we don't align with a particular software system? Um, instead, we seek to, to understand the fundamental technologies we're using to do our craft. Well, here's an example of a, a tool. We call it Utilitiles. Um, it's a CLI for exploring the vector tiles holistically. Um, it's useful because it empowers you as a cartographer to go in and say, like, hey, this big old tile, I'm symbolizing the stuff I need. There's some other stuff in here that we can take out. Um, and that um, can really make you a hero for software engineers. Here is, and I don't know if I, can, if I can do this, here's a quick demo of how Utilitiles works. Kind of pan around and you get this live panel showing you how your tile sizes are changing. Um, and here's an example of, from MapTiler of um, where you could really use it to slim down some tiles. But wait, in my last few minutes, there's even more. Vector tile cartography allows us to appreciate the limits of vector tiles and when raster tiles are actually really just better. Raster tiles, as you all know, are made of pixels instead of coordinate pairs, and raster tiles are sometimes a better solution than really dense vector tiles. They're the right format for rendering aerial imagery. They're also the best solution when you're trying to do an overlay of a continuous variable. At Stamen, we often integrate raster tiles with vector tiles in the work that we do. So we've begun building out workflows that allow us to restyle these rasters dynamically, e.g. so that you can zoom in and get better resolution seamlessly, and so that you can update da data without needing to, to re-render the tiles. This is important for uh, visualizing variables that are changing rapidly for real, for real or near real-time data visualizations. The example we're showing here is the AQI in and around the C Seattle recently, which is where I live. Also where Damon Burgett and Alan McConkie, my closest collaborators on this live. Also where Lauren Gillen, who uh, organized the, uh, the uh, uh, happy hour yesterday, uh, along with Ross Thorne lives. Also where Kate LaRue lives. So big component here. Um, you may have heard that the air quality in Seattle was um, the worst in the world yesterday. Thank God we're here. <laughs> Some of us. Um, here is an example of that air quality data um, being rendered. If I can get to there, there. And how quickly we can, we can change it as you pan and zoom in, which is really helpful if you're trying to get a sense of the granularity of, uh, of how things are changing across the region. Oops. Broadly speaking, we're calling this workflow render magic. 
because we're looking um, to optimize the performance of the rent by contributing this back directly to MapLibre so that everyone can use this sort of um, functionality to quickly and efficiently go right through that, that, that wizard of a renderer to, um, to dynamically update their maps. Thank you so much. My name again is Stephanie May. Uh, please reach out if you want to talk more. Um, uh, Ms. May on Twitter, stephanie at stamen.com. Thank you.